Um, we have quorum present, and unless Shannon wants to say something during public comment, I don't think we've got anybody else for public comment. Um, then communications are next. Does anybody have any communications that they'd wish to share? All right. Seeing none, then we've got um, first set of reports up, and you've got the other set of reports down toward the end. Is that right, Dave? We're just going to try and Right. Get I didn't want to have to renumber everything by putting the other reports up at the top. Fair in enough. In case if we didn't get to them, you know, they're at the agenda at the end. Okay. But do you want to you want to do these the three you have listed? Do the In three addition, that we have listed. If we don't get to the November reports, it's not the end of the them. world. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. All right. So of these of these three reports then. Okay, well the first one is the tax increment worksheet. I gave you just th this just for your own information. Uh, basically so you can see the split that for lack of better terms, the other uh, taxing districts are giving up that we get to retain in the TIF. So we're getting about 1.23 million uh, in total revenue. Uh, my calculations were pretty close. I was off by about $6,700 or 0.54 percent. So not too bad of a guess considering I had to guess at the mill rate for every other taxing jurisdiction. Any questions on this document? And this is what we have currently sitting as increment then? Well, this is uh, property tax or increment tax increments that will get budget year 23. Got it. Got it. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? I think that's, that was the part I was unsure about when I was reading it at first. But. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next document that I have in the packet again is just information only. We received our shared revenue expenses, our, our shared revenue payment from the state in November. They give us 15% in July, the other 85% in November. Uh, we were about 6000 uh, to the good. We had a small surplus, so that's always a good thing. And. Um, I did learn something as I was going through. If you look at the last page on it, uh, it's got the payment detail. Line 18 is called a medical transport deduction. Hadn't seen that before at the county level. That's actually deducted from our shared revenue, 13319, but then given to EMS in a separate payment. So we get it just, <coughs> it's moved around in different places. Any other questions on this at all? Okay. No. And the next one, um, if you remember when we adopted the budget, uh, one of the last uh, uh, be it resolved clauses say if I made any changes uh, to let you folks know. The only thing that I tweaked is adjusting the principal in the debt service so that it goes into the various categories. Didn't change the bottom line, just has it split out for more uh, so that the general ledger can help us when we're preparing form C numbers at year end. So like I said, that was the only adjustment that I've made. I've actually closed out the budget and applied it to the 23 ledger already. Got it. Any other questions or any questions on this document? Okay, that's it for those items. All right. Um, then uh, we're going to table approval of the minutes so we can get the headers of them sorted out on there. And yep. we'll wait till the next meeting and um, approve a slew of them. Um, so we'll move into the next one and an update regarding Fund 242, the Fire Department Special. At the last meeting, uh, Lisa Reeves asked about Fire Department Special, and I wasn't able to answer what that cash was. 
uh, when I dug into the details, I had never looked at this fund before, so we missed budgeting for it completely. We'll have to do something in later on to get the budget in, but at this point it's not a big concern. Uh, this is actually, the majority of the things are for donations received. I think mm -hmm. all the residents recently got a um, uh, request for donations. That's where all these monies go into. And talking with uh, uh, Josh Ripp, uh, they've got some ideas what they want to spend the money on, but uh, nothing else has been uh, decided yet. So eventually, within a month or two, you'll probably see a budget amendment for that. So uh, Lisa, did that basically ask the question, answer your question from last time? Yep, it, it does. So does it, um, so when the funds go in and they're spent, is there um, tracking after that? Or how what? do we know? I'd be curious to know what they end up using the funds for. Well, it's actually um, in the general ledger so we can see the detail. Um, I can uh, send a printout of that funds activity for current years so you can see what they've spent it on. One of the things that I've been changing in the uh, general ledger is I've been trying to get away from having an account called operational expenses because it just it becomes a catch-all and you have no idea what you're spending money on right. so I'll, I'll run that report off for current years so that the committee can see what they're looking for or looking at I should say sounds great thank you you're welcome <coughs> and Dave this fund has nothing to do with any of their grant or anything like that this is just purely donations from the community or business? Uh, going from memory, it's donations from the community and obviously interest income, which hasn't been much lately. Right, okay, okay, thanks. Uh, it's also got, uh, they purchased soda for the uh, firefighters who then throw money into a jar, so technically it's a public sale, charge sales tax. Yep, yep. Okay. Anybody have any other questions on that, clarifications? All right, um, start into our spate of time sensitive items. Uh, so first up is the resolution of a third amendment for the Stoughton Riverfront Development, LLC. Rodney, did you want to take this or should I? I'll let you run with it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> probably no surprise to anybody, but with the interest rate environment and the inflation dealing with uh, construction costs, um, uh, Kurt Brink, the developer, has indicated that uh, the numbers aren't working as they currently stand, and he's looking to have a uh, potential uh, TIF incentive for this project but the amounts aren't known yet. So you've got two resolutions in front of you. The first is basically to extend, uh, the third amendments are for the real estate purchase and agreement to undertake development, extending them from December 31st, which we don't think we're gonna close anymore by that date, to March 31st. So that's uh, the first resolution. And the second resolution is that uh, we've asked Ellers to do a gap analysis for us. Uh, Kurt Brink has indicated that he'll pay half the costs uh, for that so that uh, we can kind of confirm mm -hmm. the numbers that he's looking at for uh, any deficit that he has and then uh, potential uh, TIF incentive that we may want to give him. Uh, the redevelopment authority has already approved uh, uh, the contract extensions. They are in favor of the gap analysis also. As I indicated to them, uh, we don't know what the gap is. Uh, you know, I could take funding from various places. If we're talking 175,000, that's one thing. If I'm talking 1.75 million, that's another. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, just off the top of my head, you know, we can lower the sale price of the property, 
we can have a municipal revenue obligation. Uh, we could um, issue the debt ourselves and have uh, the developer pay us back. That uh, puts more bonus or onus on us if the TIF doesn't develop. But uh, we're taking a uh, something from the playbook of City of Madison, who puts every debt down. Yes. Actually, you're you're talking about the next item on here. Correct. Okay. We we're, we just had the first one on, on in front of us. Let's finish that up, and then you can go ahead and do okay. that. Okay. No problem. Point of order. Right. Rodney, is there anything that you wanted to add? No, I, I think it's um, it, it's in everybody's interest, and everybody is motivated to try to see this get completed. Um, the, the March 31st date <laughs> is um, hopefully the the final closing date, or hopefully we won't have to go beyond that. I know that Kurt Brink is committed to trying to see this project through. We have the remediation consultant doing some assessment uh, or an evaluation of costs related to the remediation work in the event that we have to stage that work and possibly do it in a couple of different phases. Um, in, in addition, we're working with WEDC to find out if there's an opportunity to extend the, the grant related to the remediation work associated with the project as well. And, and I would add that, you know, Kurt is not only committed to doing the project, but he's committed to the plan that we've been looking at. Um, there's been some suggestions that he could potentially scale it back, but that's really something that he's not interested in doing, and I don't think we are as well. Do we think that this March 31st is, isn't achievable? Because I don't know, do they have a limited number of amendments that they can do to something like this, or? Uh, I thought, maybe I'm or? not, well, I think you're thinking yeah, about probably. amending a TIF district. I think so. This is already within the TIF. We're not amending the project plan. We're just kind of delaying it. Okay. Yeah, we're delaying the closing date, basically. All right. And then, you know, the hopes is that the interest rates will settle down, and that's okay. what's causing the gap. Okay. But we think March 31st is is a, is a reasonable date for that, or that was the date that uh, Kurt Brink's attorney actually drafted in the paperwork, and Matt was fine with it. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Well, that okay. question. Yep. Right, Greg. So, yeah, in regard to the third amendment to the real estate purchase, the sales agreement, uh, and the third amendment to the agreement <laughs> to undertake development um, Stoughton Riverfront Development LLC I would uh, make the motion to recommend approval to the council all right is there a second on that second, second. all right take pick man I, I think it was Ozzy Whatever. I heard Ozzy first all right um, does anybody have any further <coughs> questions comments on uh, that date extension. All right. All in favor, aye. 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 Are any opposed? Okay. Um, so then we we moved the goalpost. Now, what's the the second part of this? The gap analysis part. So okay. Get back into the details of that yeah. one. Okay. So to kind of continue where I'm going from. Um, as I said, we could lower the sale price. We could um, have a municipal revenue obligation or an MRO. Uh, we could potentially issue debt ourselves, which would probably be at a lower rate of interest. That has the uh, detriment, though, that we're on the hook if uh, the developer doesn't come through. We'd rather have an MRO. Uh, we could take the money out of the general fund. So you know, there's multiple places we could, but as I said, am I talking 175,000, 1.75? We don't know. Um, talking with Ellers, they anticipated four to six weeks uh, to prepare the numbers uh, with a range of 3,000 to 5,000 on an hourly basis for this. Again, Kurt Brink has uh, agreed to pay half of it. Talk, and when I indicated to Dave that we're really looking at two apartment buildings, so they thought timing-wise it'd probably be at the shorter end of the range than the higher end, uh, just because 
less complex than some of the other things we've been working on. Well, splitting the difference, that's why it's 15 to 25. Rather Correct. Than 25. That's kind of the net figure. This one, uh, so all, all we would be doing is to approve to do the gap analysis, is that correct? Uh, what we're recommending to council to do the gap analysis, correct. Yes, okay. All right, anybody else have any other questions on, on that? Well, regarding item nine, the gap analysis, I would uh, move to recommend to council. All right, is there a second for that? Second by Lisa um, yes yep does anybody have any further questions comments all right all in favor aye aye, aye. 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 and are any opposed all right um, we will recommend that up to council next bit up is a resolution for cost reimbursement agreement on Stonecrest development. This particular item is related to uh, the development on the east side that we're anticipating. We've actually gotten application materials for this development area to go to the urban service area amendment process through the Capillary Regional Planning Commission. But in, advan in advance of us submitting that or filing that officially, um, we want to have a cost reimbursement agreement consistent with what we've done in other development areas. Um, the development agreement or the cost reimbursement agreement, excuse me, is before you based on um, work that uh, myself, Dave, and Jill worked with City Attorney Matt Dragney to prepare. You'll, you'll recognize one portion of this is includes the utility reimbursement aspect of the project as well. So I, I think we've incorporated what we have consistently tried to do in the past. It does put in place a, a few different deposit amounts related to scopes of work um, in the event that payments aren't received. I should just add the development team hasn't provided feedback with me or with us yet on this. Um, they've, they've received it. Uh, they did indicate they're reviewing it. Um, they're hopeful they don't have any changes, but they are anxious to move forward if, if possible. Um, but if we get any changes that they propose, we'd have to bring it back through Finance and Council. Okay. I just had a question, if I could. Sure. Um, is it, did I see a map of the, the property location yet, or am I, did I just miss it? it it's, it's in the packet as Exhibit A for this item. Okay. I'll look again. Thank sorry, you. Exhibit B. I'm sorry, it's like Exhibit B. It's on page 12 of the of that item. Okay. I can share my screen just one second. So it's an area of land between County Highway A and U.S. Highway 51. It encompasses the area where the, the airport is. Um, it's okay. east of Racetrack Road and kind of behind this, the existing Stonecrest development and um, town residential development on the east side of Racetrack Road. All righty, thank you. Welcome. Thanks for that clarification, Rodney. I thought that what, uh, I thought we were just looking at the, the little triangle bit, like the most, uh, the most current one that, we, that would be possible rather, but this is for the whole development, correct? Yeah, it's really, again, this is the cost reimbursement agreement. All right. what, what we'll be seeing after this gets put into place is we'll actually be seeing urban service area amendment requests for the entire area of, uh, in the colored map as shown. Okay, got it. <coughs> yeah. All right. Um, does anybody have any other questions regarding this? Is there any uh, wetlands that are going to get disturbed in that area? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? Rodney, do you know of wetlands. any wetlands that might be disturbed within this development? Um, yeah, wetlands are being eva would be evaluated as part of the urban service area amendment process. Yeah. And also DNR would have, uh, DNR is ultimately one of the approval authorities on the urban service area amendment process. 
the urban service area amendment goes through the capital area regional planning commission which is basically i don't know if it's part of the county but it's related to the county so their engineers and staff will will look at any uh, wetland that might be in play and you know ultimately make a decision and then the dnr would reaffirm is that what they do rodney yeah the, the uh, capillary regional planning commission actually acts as a as an agent for the department of natural resources so they do the public hearing and the staff analysis of it ultimately they make a recommendation to the dnr um, and generally the dnr supports the the capillary regional planning commission recommendation as part of that process there's public hearing so if there's anybody that has any concerns mm -hmm. about it they have the ability to to speak to the to the staff in the capital area uh, regional planning commission board does that answer your question dave yes it does all right fantastic thank um, you yep any other questions on this item If none, I would entertain a motion to approve the reimbursement agreement to council. I'll make a motion to approve. Presented to council. All right. Motion by Ozzy. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Take your pick, Greg or Dave. Greg spoke first. Um, all right. Does anybody have any other questions or comments about this agreement? Um, looks then this is just the first step of, of many steps in this one. Um, but all in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one up to council. Um, next bit up is to uh, amend a resolution to amend the depositories for funds of the city of Stoughton. At our organizational meeting, we uh, always uh, indicate what the financial institutions or depositories we can use. Uh, since that time, uh, Shannon with Stoughton Utilities has requested that we add First Business Bank on, uh, so we need to add that as a depository. And then when I was working on this resolution, I realized that Fidelity Investments, which the pension fund has used for at least a decade, is still it was not listed, so I'm adding that just to make sure it's authorized. Got it. How come they're adding another one? Janet can you. speak to that. I'm come sorry, on I up. Didn't hear it. I'm sorry, so I you're question. adding. Uh, Why do you want to add another? Yeah. So, um, given the rising interest rates that are going on, um, I'm looking to stock some money and some CDs. Um, and they had some attractive rates on CDs compared to some of the other businesses, banks that we already use. So I'm hoping to get them added so that we can get some more interest revenue from, from them. Is this the one up in the Manitowoc area? Um, is it Manitowoc? I think it's in Madison. I'm Madison, yes. Yep. Okay. yep. They do more um, commercial banking, um, but they work with municipalities as well. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Uh, anybody have any other questions about the depositories? Otherwise, I would rec or, uh, entertain a motion to approve that to council. Make the motion to recommend to council. All right. Motion by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. All in favor, aye. 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 <clears throat> and are any opposed? All right. We will recommend those additions to council. Next item up is resolution to amend the Fireman's Pension Board Investment Trustee. Um, as I indicated before, the investment with Fidelity Investment wasn't uh, um, listed on the books, but uh, one of the things that the auditors have brought up every year is the statements still are addressed to John Neal as the trustee, three finance director predecessors. <laughs> um, yeah, if you don't count the temporary right, ones that right. were in there. 
Uh, talking with Fidelity, they want uh, minutes uh, indicating that John should no longer be listed. Well, we don't have minutes per se, we have resolutions, so that's why I did this. Uh, and then number two, uh, in the past we've always put every single member of the Fireman's Pension Board on here, and then if somebody retires we have to jump through hoops to get them off. Right. So I asked the Pension <coughs> Board, they were okay with just having myself and Lisa Aid as treasurer listed because we're the financial people, we would be taking the money out anyway. Um, so that was the second intent of this. So uh, we're asking that um, this committee recommend to the council the changes so that we can get John Neal's name off and get the appropriate names on. And the pension board is fine with Limiting the limiting it down to the finance people. Okay. Correct. Perfect. All right. Does anybody have any it's questions? Been Thirty-five years or more. John's been gone at, at least time. a decade, if not more. At least, yeah. yeah he's been ten years. Yeah. At, least. <laughs> at least. Oops. So, <laughs> I'll, now I assuming that council approves it, I'll have to send documentation for him to sign so he can resign <laughs> along with the other people who are still listed. Uh, Tammy Labordi is listed too so I gotta get a hold of her. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to pay him back um, retirement funds or anything? <laughs> uh, Give him back wages? <laughs> nope. That's uh, the fireman's pension fund is only for volunteer firefighters. <laughs> Isn't that what you do? Put fires out? Uh, <laughs> hey, if they want to add me as the pension, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I used to do the accounting for a fire department. There you go. A volunteer fire department. Uh, volunteer accounting? Uh, no, they paid me. <laughs> <laughs> when I was talking with the new treasurer about all the things he had to do for payroll, it's like, would you like to do this? Sure. <laughs> and I, it did it once a year, and I had to type the checks. So I <coughs> took a typewriter home from work to type. My youngest had never seen a typewriter. I had to explain what a typewriter was. Yeah, they are uh, something, aren't they? Yeah. That, uh, what is it? There's an actor, Tom Hanks, Klexman. Yes. Oh, was it a manual one or an electric one? Though? It was electric. Okay, all right. At least, you know, <laughs> correction yeah. tape in right. there, right? She might have been impressed with the IBM Selectric with the ball <laughs> if I had one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never had an old manual one. The only problem was it didn't correct my spelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Or the keys jam. <laughs> yeah. I hated the old manual ones when you get your fingers stuck. Oh, yeah. Or <laughs> things slap on each other. Right, right. Around. Stone <laughs> Age, that's what we're talking about here. So did you need a recommendation yes, please. To, uh, to, <laughs> for approval to, for council? After we digressed, yes, oh. please. All right, so I would make the motion to recommend approval to council. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, any other questions or comments or diversion? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? I always hated it when you hit two keys in the kit there. They come up and get stuck. Yep, yep, that was for that sure. Was... <laughs> All right, there are no opposed, so we'll recommend that to council. Um, next bit up is a resolution for the shared ride services 23-24 with options through 27. Well, as a reminder, the contract with our current vendor ends at the end of 22 and federal rules did not allow us to continue that contract, so we had to issue an RFP. Um, after uh, the RFP was published, we got uh, one response from our current vendor. Um, the review committee met, was it November 29th or something like that? And we went through and agreed that our one response was the best response and ranked highest. 
<laughs> so, uh, and lowest at the same time. <laughs> yes. And so then I spent the next two days jumping through hoops with the DOT filling out more paperwork because we only had one vendor. Um, but uh, the price came in a little bit higher than I would like. Um, they had a 14% increase in, in costs. We had assumed 12%, or 8%, excuse me. They had a 12.5% increase in costs. We assumed 8, and they had another 4.5% on top of that. However, I looked at the fact that if you, because we based it upon just CPI all goods, if you look at just CPI motor fuel, mm -hmm. which a lot of this is, yep. uh, they are well below the price. And then also uh, year two, uh, they do not, they didn't get an index. It kind of stays flat. So we're saving that way. Uh, so everything appears to be good. Uh, the estimated uh, shortage that we'd have because we budgeted, uh, I'm projecting enough fund balance for the current year to, at the end of 22, to cover that. So. If everything else comes out as planned, we should be okay. So that was a very short recap of a very long process. Does anybody on the committee have any questions? Yes, Greg. Just a quick one here. On the, the three one-year options at the end of the contract, mm -hmm. um, those years would then be, is there a negotiation on each one of those years then? or just No, it's actually based upon the published CPIU values. So whatever the value is as of, I think it's November, it's either November, December, that is the rate for the whatever next year. Whatever that percentage is. Then right. If it goes up 6.2%, the rates go up by 6.2%. Got it. All right. Any other questions on that? So basically, we got a five-year contract. Correct. I don't see uh, jumping uh, around trying to find another vendor, considering the one response we got. Yeah. I did get responses back from three vendors asking, you know, when I asked them, why didn't you respond? Uh, one said uh, he hasn't had any luck going against the big players in the state. Uh, another one said... They haven't submitted any bids because they've been having trouble finding clerical staff and drivers and are looking to increase their rates, surprise, mm -hmm. yeah, of pay to grab those people. And the third one said they've been adding so many lately, they don't want to add any more until things stabilize a little bit. Okay. So it was just a... Maybe a rough year to go for an RFP. It, it could be. All right. Anyway. Any other questions on this item? If none, I will entertain a motion to approve to council. I'll make that motion. All right. Motion by Greg. Is there a second? Second. 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 All right, you got three choices. <laughs> How's he got it? Yep, it's all right. Second. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ben. <laughs> thanks, Ben. <laughs> all right, any other questions or comments or any other seconds? Thirds. Thirds, sure. Um, all right, all in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? All right, um, we'll recommend that one up to council. Next one up is a resolution to amend 2023 budget related to refugee settlement activities. Um, this is something that uh, because uh, the refugee settlement organization uh, contacted us, the mayor asked me to draft something up. Uh, so uh, in a recap, uh, we put $5,000 into the budget for refugee settlement. At least as of the end of November, there was 38.63 left. Uh, the um, group, oh, where is the name of it? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
doesn't matter at this point. Um, the group has requested that uh, funds be carried forward for the subsequent year uh, for that purpose. The way I drafted the resolution, it's an amount uh, not to exceed the um, 3650. Um, I was looking at the wrong resolution. That's why I couldn't find the name. Uh, there was Stoughton Re Resettlement Assistant Project. Uh, so I wrote it up that um, the amount will not exceed 3863, and I'll reduce it if any Becker invoices come in December. So we'd be amending the 23 budget, assuming the council is okay with that. Greg, you look confused. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering because the, we had the $5,000, 38. 63 is is the balance is the remainder November. okay so. and, that, and you said that 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 uh, that amount of money was not budgeted to carry over then that was absorbed into the budget well it didn't get absorbed per se but it was uh destined to lapse everything lapses to the general fund, right, goes into the general fund. unless it's authorized to be carried forward so okay. in this case uh, they'd asked for monies to be carried or they were inquiring about monies to be carried forward. I'm making the assumption that this committee would like to do that. Obviously, you can change any wording if you want to, but uh, it's at least... 3863 would be coming out of the general fund. Pardon me? 3863 would be coming out of the general fund. In effect, yes, because when something lapsed to the general fund, then you take it out of the general fund to increase the allowed budget. The fund the balance. Year. Yeah. The general fund balance. Fund, general fund balance. Yeah. Right. And there were some grants that they thought they would have Gary Wright, and they ended up doing some of them internally. So they would like to use the balance to to try to secure some other grants utilizing Becker's consulting services. And right now there's a total, my last count was nine families that they've relocated to the Stoughton area. So that they have needs. All right, everybody clear on that one? Then? Good. Recommend right. to council. Very good. Motion by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Second. Say all of a sudden we got no second. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, any other questions or comments on this one? All right. All in favor, aye. 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 Is there any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council. So it looks like we would add one resolution one way or the other, either to carry them over or to let it go and then have a new resolution, mm -hmm. correct? Well, I guess it's how you look at it. If you're gonna say, no, we're not gonna let it go, yes, then they'd have to approach and say, we're looking for more funding again. Right, yeah, okay. All right, um, our next item up is, uh, will this be, yes, it's an ordinance on amending section 2-585 hotel motel tax of the city of Stoughton municipal code. Okay, this is my first attempt at a draft just to get conversation at this level. Uh, as you may remember, uh, True by Hilton has been very negligent in paying their fiduciary taxes withheld. Surprise, surprise, third quarter they paid on time. Now I did invoice them for approximately 6700 for the second quarter which was late, which was $5,000 maximum uh, and then interest on top of that. They have not paid that yet though. But with that said, uh, the draft ordinance changes here. Uh, number one, it's a cleanup because uh, we're current past practices to pay both the um, uh, Stoughton Visitor Services and Stoughton Chamber of Commerce, uh, where it didn't say that before. I was just cleaning it up so that we were following past practice. Uh, the number two thing that I 
did was just to clean up so we're in compliance with the USA Patriot Act. Uh, if you remember back prior to 9-11 when you went to a hotel, if you were going on company business, they'd put it down as being charged to City of Stoughton. With, as a result of the Patriot Act, it's got to show the name of the guest. Well, technically, I am not tax exempt. Uh, so, you know, we had to change things and this language allow, cha uh, my proposed change allows it to say the uh, name of the person but still claim the exemption for their employer who's paying for it. Uh, third thing that I was cleaning up is the ordinance did not say interest and penalties where they go. So I, and that could have been part of the 20 some thousand dollars that we accumulated life to date in that fund and took out. The draft, or, draft changes move those, allow the interest and penalties to be in the general fund uh, with all the other interest income. And the last thing that I changed is the uh, fee of 5,000, instead of being for one year, it's 5,000 max per quarter. Give it a little bit more teeth. Hopefully True by Hilton's done being a bad boy, but if they start up again, we've got a little bit more teeth that we can get some money out of them and say, please pay your fiduciary requirements. So with that, I will open up the floor to anybody to see if they have questions or suggestions or conversations. Hey, did you run this by Matt? Have not yet uh, because it was, I didn't even know how you folks wanted to go. If it's going to, uh, I can certainly run it past Matt before we put it to yeah. Uh, the first reading at the council. I think we need to do that, yes. Okay. Um, are you okay with any changes Matt makes, or do you want to see them before we submit it to council for first reading? I think I would, personally, I would prefer to have Matt uh, do a, just a read over and uh, make any recommendations that he might have and then run it past the committee here and then. Okay. Council. I think so that's the appropriate way to do it. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. So if he says no changes or no suggested edits, then send it on to council. Uh, I think you'd have to have a motion and a vote on it right today. Then. Yeah, you can make it subject to attorney review or whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest that we make a motion for approval. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> make a motion to council for approval pending the attorneys. Um, approval, I guess. There's your motion. Yep, I agree with that. There's your motion. All right, and Lisa, are you? That's a motion you're making, Lisa. Yes. Very yes. Good. Second. Uh, second by Greg. Um, do we have any questions on that? Does anybody want to talk more about the language that's changed in here, or other suggestions or edits? All right. Um, then all in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? All right. Um, pending Matt's review, uh, we'll recommend it to council. Thank you, everyone. All right. So that's, I think that's on the agenda for tonight as well, is it not? No, it's no, not. no it's I did not, not put it on yeah, the agenda right. for tonight because okay. I didn't know yeah, ordinance what ordinance. you yeah. folks wanted to do. All right, um, next bit up is a resolution for acceptance of TID 4 audit for 2021 and TID 7 audit for 2020. Um, Pretty much following standard practice with the annual audit, we've done resolutions accepting the reports. Um, I've got uh, both TID number four and TID number seven reports in the packet with you. Uh, about the only thing to really highlight is the last page on it, each report. Um, we did have some compliance issues, uh, but uh, talking with the auditors, 
these are basically a shame shame letter mm. uh, that you didn't comply but there's no fault per se um, uh, revenue does not even want the audit reports I gave them to them and they said you don't have to give these to us so um, I don't other than you know if a member of the public looks uh, but uh, I guess I don't have any other comments at this point. <clears throat> I did not put this as a time sensitive item just because I thought I had so many other time sensitive <laughs> ones that didn't need to be acted on tonight by council. And then for, um, and then we'll be just for these two um, to catch up on those and then are we compliant with any of the other TIDs that are we had our um, preliminary audit meeting with the auditors last week. Uh, it's TID 5 uh, that is approaching uh, the 30% level. We looked at uh, expenditure. There was about 200000 left before we hit that threshold. Uh, calendar year 22, we had about 165,000. So we're going to be planning in 24, 23 to have, or it'll be occurring. The audit will occur in 24 on the 23 books for okay. that TID. Okay. All right. So we won't. We'll have no more shame letters. Right. And it, uh, Jamin's the one who actually brought it to the attention of. Baker Tilly that uh, TID number four was, uh, or excuse me, TID number seven was kind of past due on an audit, but because we signed the audit contract on a certain date, we avoided a material finding. Uh, so uh, I think that kind of put it on Baker Tilly's radar to look at it too, because they probably should have told us sooner. Um, does anybody have any other questions on that? All right. Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion to recommend that to council, not on the fast track. So moved. All right. By Lisa. Greg, is that a second? Was there a sure. second? Greg yep. got a second yep. on that. <coughs> um, anybody have any other questions or clarifications with this? All right. All in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? Aye. All right. We'll recommend that to council at next meeting. Um, next up is a resolution for creation of irrevocable fiduciary trust for firefighters pension fund. Well, this has been on the back burner for a while, but when I um, had our first meeting with the Firefighters Pension Board, I brought this up. We've got approximately $0.9 million uh, basically sitting in checking and a small savings account fidelity uh, that because of the current, both the current accounting standards and current actuarial standards, we don't get the benefit of that 0.9 million when it, we calculate the net pension liability. Um, so number one, I want to move it over into a fiduciary trust account. Um, that will also uh, make it so that, and not that I'm saying a council would do it at all, but technically we could take the entire cash amount away from the pension fund uh, if we wanted to. I don't think anybody wants to. I think we want to make it known to the pension people that you know we're, that money is earmarked for you. That's another reason I suggested that change. Uh, assuming that we want to go forward with this change, uh, <coughs> we'll be working with uh, Stafford Rosenbaum in whatever attorney in their department actually works with creating the trust because it will have to be a separate legal entity. Um, instead of having to do an actuarial report every two years, we'll need an actuarial report every year. 
Um, other than that, uh, I don't anticipate a lot of other expenses, <laughs> but uh, I did bring this up to the pension board. They, uh, it was unanimous that they approved it. Uh, so it's now to uh, this uh, committee to discuss it. I did not put it on tonight's council agenda because I wanted, didn't know how you guys wanted to go forward. So at that point, I will open up the floor for any questions. So the primary reason to move it would be so that you're able to claim the liability of that money or the asset of... Well, and I'm not an actuary, but right now uh based on last year's books we had a net pension liability of about 1.2 million and then we had to record the uh, that entire 1.2 million in our books as a liability mm -hmm. now forget that interest rates have changed and everything else uh if we had a pension or if those were in a trust account uh, the city of Stoughton, instead of recording a liability of about 1.2 million, would record a liability of about 0 0.3 million. Okay. Uh, so it only affects the statement of net position, statement of activities. It doesn't affect the general fund per se, but it does make the books look cleaner. Got it. And correct me if I'm wrong, the way it's set up, it's only paid out for the survivor or the spouse or the survivor based on a percentage is that sounds that is correct right? according yeah. to the agreement yeah so you don't have to panic that our liability is more than what we have because unless the world ends today and everybody gets paid out it'll never catch up to us correct uh, based upon the numbers that we had we were about 72 percent funded something like that which is more than reasonable as Tim mentioned unless you know there's an earthquake and southern wisconsin disappears there's not going to be a large payout we wouldn't be able to make any resolutions to do so that's right <laughs> <laughs> on the bright side <laughs> yeah if that happens we've got some other issues we too not just issues, the pension right? fund right. <laughs> so like a lava lake in the middle of the state okay all right um, any other questions on this? I mean, I think that, that makes sense to, to move that. All right. I would entertain a motion then to recommend that to council. I'll make a motion to recommend uh, the council. Second. Second by Greg. Um, are there any other questions, comments, clarifications? All right. All in favor, aye. 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 And are any opposed? All right. We will recommend that to council. All right. Um, so that will be at council next meeting. Next meeting, yeah. And I think I'm done hogging the floor for a while. Hey, you're going to be a part of that. <laughs> well, I know, one, but I'm, so. not, I'm not hogging <laughs> it. I'm sharing it now. You're sharing it. Good. All right. Uh, the next resolution up is to approve the police department 23-24 union contract and related budget amendment. So this just yep. So this just went to personnel back on the sixth and was approved unanimously. I want to thank you guys ahead of time for approving that nine percent. Um, that made negotiating much easier than it normally is. So that was a, a nice way to go in <laughs> because everything they asked for, we would say yes but that's gonna come against the 9%. So that was a great negotiating tool. So I appreciate that. Uh, a couple other things, we did go for a two-year contract. They had asked for three or suggested three. I really didn't wanna do that because we don't know financially where we're gonna be come three years. So I had a one year at 9%, which is what you already approved. Year two is at one and a half percent with a me too clause, meaning that if uh, we give more than 1.5% that they would be included in that percentage for their increase. And the only other things that we agreed to was in 2024, um, we are out of market for our officer in charge as well as our FTO, which is our field training officer and officer in charge. So we bumped both of them from 50 and 55 cents respectively to $1, which is, is close to market. 
Um, other than that, from the financial aspect, again, in 2024, our uniform allowance has fallen behind. Keep in mind, this is used for like what type of duty belt they would like because everybody likes something different and other um, tools that they need to do their job. So we're gonna increase that in 2024 by $50 per uh, sworn officer. And that was it. Like I said, the duration of the agreement would be for a two year agreement. Dave, if you wanna walk through the other pieces that you need for the budget to make this happen. Okay. Um, if you remember uh, at the closed session, we had discussed that uh, in looking at the budget, I felt comfortable with sustainable revenue of about 350000 um, that uh, could be used for both this and general employees for a market adjustment. So that 350000 was basically in a holding account. And uh, on page two, the chart of all the accounts that we'd be moving things in and out of, it's basically taking it out of the holding accounts uh, recognizing some of the payments in lieu of taxes from Stoughton Utilities in the general fund instead of the equipment replacement fund, uh, increasing the budget for wages and benefits to the police department and uh, decreasing the holding account in general revenues, which is the general fund. Um, K-9 fund has a small portion, $200 total, that'll be coming out of their fund balance uh, rather than the general fund. Uh, but uh, we're actually increasing the total uh, expenditures uh, by just the 101.463 because of the transfer between funds, basically an accounting transaction. So a lot of numbers there, but uh, it's that's just last time right it's just, yep the what i talked what he gave you last time correct now you just have to see uh what goes into the sausage making all right there, there was a a lot of work behind this does anybody have any any questions on this dave Razi or ben I know Greg and <laughs> Greg and Lisa and I have seen it a few times. A few times, but. yes. No. All right. Um, if no other Move questions. To recommend the council. Um, all right. Motion by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Right. Second by Lisa. Um, any other questions or clarifications? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council tonight, yes. All right, um, that leads us to the, the bunch of reports that we weren't sure if we'd get to. Right, but uh, it looks like we have time, so. Yep. Okay, um, I had uh, gone through I'll spend a little bit more time this month as opposed to the prior month uh, going through. There were some comments that I added uh, to various pages, uh, including one uh, showing that True by Hilton actually paid third quarter room taxes. Uh, so I can certainly go through each report or talk about the comments that I made. Uh, there was nothing earth shattering in the reports though, so I'm gonna open up the floor to any questions that the group may have? All right, this is on any any report. If anybody's got anything they want clarified or answered, and I'll I'll get into. I guess let's just talk about A through F: the bank racks, journals, receipt register. I, I'll do give more comments on the revenue expenditure reports than for those details, though. Sure. Sure. Eyes are getting blurry again. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of numbers. Yes, there are. Um, let's see. Dave, on ones where, um, like in the check reconciliation, ones like there's, I mean, we've got some that are outstanding, like to 2021 even. Uh, when do those 
ever fall off or? Uh, sort of. Um, under Wisconsin statutes, every two years, stale checks have to be submitted to the county treasurer. So the 21 checks will fall off into unclaimed funds and we'll be submitting them to the treasurer then. Okay, got it. All right. So, yes, they fall off because we pay them out to somebody else. Somebody else. Got it. Okay. Okay. I wondered about that. Where does, where does that go? But then that answers another question of, I always wondered, where do all the unclaimed funds from the treasury come from? Now I know. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions on the, on the A through F reports? All right. How about any of the next reports? Okay. Uh, finance departments, RevX. Uh, the only thing I highlighted was the $6,200 in grants. We got a check. We don't know what to do with it. I didn't want to put the check in a drawer. I wanted to cash it. I had to put the money somewhere, so I threw it in mine so it stands out. When we find it, we'll give it to the appropriate department. Yeah, at one point we thought maybe it was related to the storm damage, but I don't know if it is or not. not. Yeah, I'd have to look at That was at the, the only lead I had. Yeah. <laughs> so sooner or later, the department's going to ask about it. Right. I mean, that'd be good, you know, just to find like six grand laying around somewhere. It'd be all right. It'd be all right, yeah. It's a good problem to have, I guess. Right, yeah, for sure. Uh, for the shared ride services, uh, there's not too much to report there. Um, the taxi provider charges, that's actually only 10 months of activity when this report was run. But uh, as I indicated, I anticipate uh, year-end having about a $16,000 surplus. Uh, when it comes to uh, the next one for general revenues, highlighted a couple lines. Uh, the payment in lieu of taxes from Stoughton Utilities, Shannon and I were actually discussing it earlier today. Uh, she's got the preliminary numbers uh, calculated right now, but she's in the middle of her preliminary audit with Baker Tilly, so she'll look at it again. But I anticipate getting that money in early January. So then uh, that money will be there. Uh, the other uh, line item that uh, I highlighted was the HSA retirement payout. Uh, if you remember when we set up the new accounting on the payouts, uh, the council gave me authority to move money out of that payout account to the appropriate departments when a retirement is announced. Well, we have a retirement announced. Uh, Pat Conlon uh, will be leaving us at December 30th. Patrick Frisch. Pat, yeah, Pat Patrick Conlon's Frisch. already left. Yep. Uh, well, he's already got paid too. Yes. But, yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, Lieutenant Frisch is leaving at uh, year end. So that 85000 is going to be severely depleted. Um, but until that amount is known, I won't have the dollar amount, but that'll be pending. Um, then will we will we put um, in 23 get monies back into that or 23 budget uh, the proposed and now adopted put 85,000 in. All right. Yeah. Um, that was kind of a guess that first year what we'd need. Uh, we had four large retirements in the police okay. department in 22, which really skewed things. Uh, but we'll see where we're going. But at least right now. I've got monies set aside for these large retirements so that the department heads don't have to freak out and leave a position open for four months until you know funding's available. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, the RDA, and I'm going to be discussing this one more w with the RDA tomorrow. But uh, at this point, I anticipate. Well, the RDA asked to carry forward $12,000, they're not going to have $12,000 to carry forward. So uh, at year end, I anticipate assuming that council wants to allow them to carry forward 12000 
we will need to do a 22 budget amendment to give them additional monies. Right now, they're on track for $1,846 deficit. That doesn't include Stoughton Utilities for December, doesn't include Becker Professional Services for December, does not include uh, Matt attending the RDA meeting for an hour uh, last week. So uh, they will have a deficit. So just informational only so you aren't surprised. And the last one, City Council, this is the uh, first time you've seen this one. Um, I kind of made an executive decision that this uh, committee would want to start seeing City Council's budget every month just so they're aware of where it's at. Uh, if you want a different committee to do so, let me know. But uh, for the most part, you've only got uh, wages and benefits for the Council, Sustainability Committee, and Arts Council. Okay, that's not too bad to keep track of, but... Okay. So I'll open up the floor to any questions on the five revenue expenditure reports, including the RDA's projected deficit. Anybody else have any questions on these reports? I didn't have any help. All right. Um, that runs us through our, our business at hand. Um, we've got future agenda items in there. Um, we've still got special assessments out there, uh, fund balance policy, um, boundary amendment for TID 6, and uh, capital improvement plan and debt management policies. Um, does anybody else have anything they wish to add into future items? All right, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ozzy. Um, any last minute questions? All right, all in favor, aye. 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 And any opposed? All right, meetings adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.